Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Finally feeling like fall. Temperatures very close to normal, but will we get rid of the clouds and rain for the weekend? A local company is sending 22 drivers and fuel to Puerto Rico. We're there as their colleagues say goodbye. A mom finds her boyfriend in bed with her 15-year-old daughter. She stabs him. The family dog attacks him. Tonight, we'll hear from that brave mom. All right, Sean, we're going to begin, though, with breaking news out of the nation's capital. Tom Price has just resigned as Secretary of Health and Human Services. Price came under fire for his use of government-funded private jets to travel the country. Yesterday, he apologized and vowed to pay the government back for the travel costs. His resignation comes after President Trump said earlier today that he would make a decision sometime tonight on his future. The president has, though, accepted Price's resignation. Our other top story tonight, a manhunt underway for a man wanted for the sex assault of a teen girl. And police believe he shouldn't be hard to find since he was stabbed and attacked by a dog as he tried to get away. We've got a look at the mug shot. This is Kevin Price. According to police, he sexually assaulted his girlfriend's daughter overnight. Sean Lay is live. And uh, Sean, first off, any word on how the, the victim is doing in this case? I did speak to the mother right after her little girl came home. She was speaking to investigators, her mom says, in a clear, confident voice, telling them everything that has been happening inside that home. You guys hit on something very important. Kevin Price, the suspect, he was stabbed by the victim's mother, was able to get away as police were arriving. They've been looking for him all day. Here is the very latest from police. We do consider him dangerous. We would like to uh, have him turn himself in as soon as possible. If anybody has seen uh, Mr. Price, please call 911, call Crime Stoppers, um, and so we can uh, get him in custody as soon as possible. Police, police very much want to get Kevin Price into custody right away. The mom, she works overnight, got off a little early, walked in, found Price in bed with her young daughter. Why is my daughter in the bed with you and she don't have on any clothes? This mother tells me she flew into a rage after she came home from work at 4.30 this morning and caught her 35-year-old boyfriend, Kevin Price, in bed with her 15-year-old daughter. I just snapped and went crazy. And um, he pushed me down the stairs and my dog started attacking him. This mom says her daughter telling police that the boyfriend threatened to kill her and kill her mother if she told anyone about his violent actions. The mother grabbed a knife. I stabbed him once there and then he ended up pushing me down and my dog started attacking him again and he got to the front door. Detroit police setting up a perimeter here on Marlow, east of Finkel. James McLean lives right down the street and says that rape suspect was hiding in an open van. He was hiding inside the car near your house. Right, trying to get away, hiding from the police. Price got away. Tonight, we know he's a parole absconder doing prison time for unlawful imprisonment, multiple weapons charges and assault. He's been in a relationship with this mom for the past four years. I said, did he touch you? She was like, yes. I just went crazy from there because I know she's not lying. Police telling me tonight that mom is in no legal jeopardy for going after Price defending her daughter with that knife. Three other very young children that she has with Price in that home. Children's Services opening up a case. They just left the house a short time ago, Devin. Well, Sean, is this uh, out of the blue then, or is he a suspect in any other cases? Think about this. She took a job as security overnight about three weeks ago, taking on more shifts. Price isn't working, so she left the kids alone. She says her daughter started withdrawing almost right away. She and police agree this has been going on for at least three weeks. Mm. All right, Sean. Well, developing right now, the head of the Michigan State Police facing an investigation for sharing that Facebook post about the NFL player protests. Michigan State Police say an internal investigation will decide if Colonel Christy Kibbe Etchu will be disciplined. Etchu shared a meme on Facebook calling NFL players degenerates for protesting during the national anthem. She has since apologized and Governor Rick Snyder said on Wednesday he will not fire her or ask her to resign. 
There are a whole lot of questions tonight after a 15 year old was shot overnight at a home on Detroit's east side. 15 year old Jalen Turner critically injured. In fact, in the hospital right now, he was inside his family's home on Runyon Street near City Airport. Priya Mann following this story for us. Priya, let's start with uh, whether the weapon was recovered. Police did not find a weapon and family members tell me there were seven children inside this home when the shooting happened. You can see kids toys on the front lawn here. Now a 15 year old fighting for his life. It was just after midnight when 15 year old Jalon Turner was shot in the head inside his own home. He never been in trouble. He goes to uh, Lions Academy. I ain't never see. I didn't see this one coming. A family member told police they heard what sounded like a gunshot and believed the weapon was fired by someone inside the home. But investigators could not find a gun. Bullets don't have no name, so I don't even know where he got a gun from or why was a gun even in the house. It's just real tragic. Donnie Marsh Sr. says his four kids and the victim's siblings were at home when the gun was fired. It touched the nerve. It's real, real close. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm right here now, like, you know, just been been walking around just seeing what I can see, you know. The teen was shot just after midnight on Runyon Street near Gunston and McNichols on Detroit's east side. The teen remains in the hospital in critical condition. Uh, hoping that he pulls through or whatever. Uh, if someone knows something or seen something, just, you know, hit the investigators up, let them know what's going on. And just young people, just stay from, stay from around guns, period. Now Detroit police are trying to determine whether that weapon was fired inside the home, outside the home, whether this was a stray bullet or whether the victim was the intended target. Now this family has gone through a lot recently with the death of another child. Now this family hoping a 15 year old boy will survive being shot in the head. Reporting live from the east side, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Oh, that's crushing. All right, Priya. Switching gears here, if uh, today is any indication, we are in for an absolutely beautiful autumn weekend. Yeah, uh, but getting our first fall chill uh, in the next couple of days, let's uh, take things over to Ben. D maybe temps down in the 30s, huh? Uh, in some spots, possibly. We're going to look at that in our four zone forecast coming up. But first things first, the drive home may be a little bit wet, especially north of the city. Uh, north of 69, we've got some showers. In fact, some thunderstorms coming in off of uh, the Saginaw Bay. If you are going up north, up 75, you may run into a brief but a fairly intense shower uh, there in uh, South Saginaw and north of Flint. And as these move to the south, they should weaken, but do expect to see at least some scattered showers around for the next few hours. And then things start to dry out as we get closer to sunset tonight. But man, what a weekend. Temperatures close to average on the high side. Those morning lows getting chilly. And we'll look at that in your four zone forecast coming up, guys. Okay, Ben. Clinton River Road is back open tonight after a violent crash shut down the road for hours between 17 Mile and Romeo Plank. According to investigators, the silver SUV began drifting over the center lane, then crashed head on into the maroon minivan, and that collision sent both drivers to the hospital. The 46 year old driver of the van suffered severe injuries. The 18 year old uh, driver of the SUV was treated and released. Investigators do believe that drugs or alcohol may have been involved. The situation in Puerto Rico is becoming increasingly dire. The island right now running 100% on generators and desperate for water, food, and fuel, and no real way to get it everywhere it's needed. Critically needed supplies in thousands of shipping containers. There they are, just sitting at the main port in San Juan, stuck there because basically of communication failures. Another issue, truck drivers. Officials say there just aren't enough to deliver supplies to the hardest hit areas. And that's where Atlas Oil in Trenton is stepping in. Today, the company held a send off for drivers they're sending down to Puerto Rico to help with the recovery effort. And make no mistake, it is a tall order because these guys are headed there for 30 to 60 days. Our Paula Tutman caught up with them before they took off. Atlas Oil is actually a government subcontractor, but they're still sending trucks and they're still sending drivers and they're sending fuel. And there's a real point of pride in doing that. Today at Atlas Oil and Taylor, an emotional send off. We simply said we have an opportunity and these people raise their hand. The company has 22 tankers filled with diesel fuel loaded on the barges. When those barges arrive at one of the ports of Puerto Rico Monday, the drivers will be waiting for them to get that fuel to hospitals, to fuel generators, gas stations for consumers, to get Puerto Rico back up and back onto the grid 
You, you roughly have um, somewhere in the ballpark of 400,000 gallons of fuel total. Larry Barker is one of those drivers. But the main thing is thinking about what the individuals need, the hospitals, the police departments, the regular citizens just in their homes, what they need. When the company asks for volunteers to spend as many as 30 to 60 days on the ground, living in tents and roughing it, Larry was one of the first to raise his hand to go. Yes, he's a paid employee, but for him, this is not about the job. It is about the people and his country that needs him. It is a sacrifice, but just think about what those people are going through every single minute of the day. His wife says she couldn't be more proud. Oh, giddy proud, so proud of him. He is an amazing man and I am so proud. So all of these drivers have basically signed up for a 30 to 60 day deployment. They call them missions. They're pretty sure that they're gonna be on the outside of that. Likely at least two months in Puerto Rico. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Oh boy, such a dire situation really as we watch it. Yeah. A quiet neighborhood on edge after a teen girl is attacked in broad daylight. I can't believe somebody would be doing that at that time of day, especially, you know, because it's rush hour traffic. New here at 5, brand new information into who police are looking for. Rod? Much like Detroit, Toledo is learning to make its waterfront a showplace. There are solutions, but they're not easy. Unlike the city of Detroit, the Maumee River here in Toledo is a problem itself. Check out the green in the shoreline. That's algae. What are they going to do about it? What's the impact? We have the answer. All right, Rod, but first, new developments in the push to bring Amazon to Detroit. We've got a first look at what Dan Gilbert plans to do to try to make that happen, and it's next. New at 6. Police are called in to investigate after two local high school football players say they were attacked after a game. But tonight, we've learned their story has changed in one important way. Plus, he seemed like just another customer and even paid for his purchase. But then he came back with a gun. See what this gas station security camera captured. New at 6. Well, we know Dan Gilbert pushing hard to get Amazon to build its HQ2, the second headquarters here in Detroit. And now we're getting a look at some of the plans on how he wants to do that. Check out this teaser video that he posted to Twitter today. It features aerial videos of the city, including the Detroit River and Riverwalk, the Q line riding down Woodward, the city's auto industry, and much, much more. And it ends with hashtag Amazon Detroit and states the deadline for Amazon's proposal, which is October 19th. Looks slick. It's pretty, it's a great video. Good 30 seconds, that's for sure. The Maumee River has turned green. Now there are real, real worries that the water supply for the entire city of Toledo could soon be unsafe to drink. The Maumee River has looked a whole lot like the Chicago River on St. Patrick's yeah, Day over the yeah. past few weeks, but of course we know we're nowhere near March. <laughs> uh, this stuff is not harmless dye. That's right, it's toxic algae. Rod Maloney in Toledo tonight, his residents have been so on edge about the water being safe enough to drink. Rod? This is International Park in downtown Toledo where the fishing is allowed and even encouraged. But if you take a look around me here, you notice that, well, it's a bit of a ghost town. And that's because this is the Maumee River, and while the river is green, it's not the kind of green you want to see. Earlier this summer, Local 4 told you about a report done by the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Michigan predicting this year's algae bloom. NOAA satellite pictures show this is an especially large bloom. As bad as it looks, it's not dangerous for the drinking water. Small comfort for Toledans ordered not to drink the water three years ago. Clarence Spencer passed on it ever since. I've been buying bottled water ever since it got bad a few years back. And Avid Angler, he came out to see if the water is wet a hook clean. This is clear compared to what it was the other day. The other day it was really bad. This whole thing was green. All these rocks down here was green. The Maumee is a silt bottom river, so you'll never see it look blue like the Detroit River. But when it's pea green, it hurts fishing and restaurants and pretty much everything else. Mayor Paula Hicks Hudson believes the time has come for outside help. 
Three letters have gone to President Trump. Um, I sent a letter just this past week to Governor Casey, who's the governor in the state of Ohio, asking for the help that I think we need. There are no secrets here, no mystery about what's causing this and how to prevent it, but it's going to take years, and that's the real problem, because they've been fighting this for almost a decade, and it's likely it's going to take a decade or more to be able to create the fix, using a lot more retention ponds, putting the fertilizer deeper into the ground so that it doesn't wash into the river. In downtown Toledo, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Rod, you heard uh, the mayor mentioning the letters to the White House. She's asking the president for an executive order requiring farmers and other fertilizer users to sit down with scientists and municipalities to try and work on a plan to solve this problem once and for all. Okay, we got Ben back in a beautiful day, though a bit chilly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little cooler than we where we've been. That's definitely true, <laughs> but it's all coming together. We've got the turning leaves, and now yeah. we've got the fall temperatures, and it's go along with it. Yeah, really starting to take shape, just like fall. But uh, temperatures that are just to the south—that's where the 70s are hanging out. We're not going to get to enjoy those until we get into next week. But there is a significant warm-up once we get past this weekend. But we've got to enjoy fall uh, for two days before that happens. And you can see how that cold air has just been carved out here over the Great Lakes. And eventually uh, we will see some of these warm temperatures bubble back. Clouds beautiful out there and look at how blue the sky was. We got several pictures on storm pins with just some brilliant blue skies above those uh, cumulus white clouds. However, some of those clouds did drop some rain today and we'll look at where that is on uh, Ford Live Radar here in just a second. Uh, looking out over downtown Detroit, Past the spider webs, you can see more clouds uh, that are out there right now. 66 is our current temperature. It's been a little bit breezy today, to say the least. North Northwest winds at 14. Uh, just last hour, we had gusts of 20 to 25 in most of the area, with some spots, including Metro, gusting over 30 miles an hour. And we've got some showers to discuss. Here's I-69, so all this is in our far north zone. But you can see in the last 30 minutes up here in Tuscola County, there were some lightning strikes north of Cairo. So as those showers continue to move to the south, uh, they will be weakening as they get away from the instability that's uh, fueled by the lake. But there's still going to be at least some uh, scattered showers lasting for the next few hours. In fact, it's probably not going to be until 9 o'clock, I think, that we'll be able to say we'll be completely dry tonight. Everything that's in our metro zone looks pretty light, although we may be getting just a couple drops uh, down near the river. Uh, it's not going to amount to much. In fact, counting Monday, our, our morning totals, this is what we're looking at for rainfall. The most we've seen is up in Lapeer at two tenths, but most of us have just seen a trace to nothing. Uh, that's out there so far. Here's a look at tonight's. We will be dry after sunset uh, about 10 o'clock or so. That's when things start to dry out. Watch what happens here close to the lake as we get that north wind off of Lake Huron. There may be some showers hanging around around the lake shore tonight and into tomorrow morning. But as those winds continue to shift, that should end that process, at least in the afternoon hours on Saturday. There's a whole lot of sunshine as we finish out the weekend. And there's not a whole lot of rain to look at as we get into the next seven days. So let's talk chilly tonight. Here are your lows in your four zone forecast and we'll start in the metro zone. Keep in mind these are our warmest numbers. 48 is what we're going to see in the city. Inland areas will be some of our coolest. We're calling it 40 out in Onstead, but I wouldn't be surprised out in Lenawee County. Maybe an upper 30 degree reading there for an hour or so. West zone anywhere between the low and mid 40s, and we could be seeing a 30 in a couple spots here in our north zone. Lakes should keep everybody cool on the east, or warmer, I should say, on the east side at 47. And then those numbers slack off as you work your way inland. High temperatures tomorrow get to 64 degrees, and it is going to be with a lot of sunshine. Ditto for Sunday as we warm up just a bit. But the 70s come into play next week. Wednesday will hit 80, so we're going well above average yeah. again. After just Let's a little swing taste. Swing back up. Fall. Yep, I'm, I'm all for staying in the 80s. Yeah. That's fine. Thanks, ben. Let's check in with Priya. A farmer is battling his township for the rights to hold weddings in his own barn, and a judge recently made a ruling. We'll tell you why this story is far from over. All right, Priya, but first, these Michigan parents charged in a case that's made international headlines. Why prosecutors said they did nothing as their newborn child died. That's next. Across Michigan, stories from Cascade Township and Wyoming over near Grand Rapids. But we want to start with a story that's making international headlines out of Lansing. That's where a couple has been charged in the death of their newborn daughter. Police say 30-year-old Rachel Pylan refused to take her baby daughter to the hospital even when she was coughing blood and not eating. She instead told a midwife who delivered the baby 
uh, that the girl was fine and that God makes no mistakes. The child died two days later. Both Pylan and her husband are now charged with involuntary manslaughter. A reward is being offered in Cascade Township after more than two dozen handguns go missing. 20 guns taken earlier this month from a shooting range, while another 13 were stolen from a gun store. So far, five of the guns have been recovered. Police have arrested eight people in connection with the thefts, but the ATF is offering a $5,000 reward for the recovery of the 28 guns that are still missing. An exotic bird valued at $1,600 has been recovered after being stolen from a pet shop in Grand Rapids. Max the parrot was taken Wednesday from a Wyoming pet store. Uh, police say a woman walked out of the store with Max tucked away in her hands. It turns out a young man owns the parrot and keeps him at the store while making installment payments. And today he was reunited with Max. New at 530. Well, it's a potpourri of breathing problems at the doctor's office this week. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, see what's going around and what's hitting the hardest where you live. I'm Nick Monticelli. Take a look at this video. Remember just a couple of days ago, a big announcement that the sinkhole repairs were done. But isn't there a lawsuit against this whole thing? The status on litigation between the city of Sterling Heights and Macomb County. Residents in a new Baltimore neighborhood are concerned after police say a 13 year old girl had to fight off a stranger in this neighborhood yesterday. Next we are a 13 year old girl just walking down the street forced to fight off an attacker. Now police need your help finding the man who did it. It tops our news tonight at 530. New Baltimore police putting out the stranger danger alert tonight after this terrifying attack. Happened last night as the girl was walking her bike on St. Clair Drive around 530. Coco McAvoy spoke with neighbors and the police. Police say this is the area where the incident happened. It's a quiet neighborhood. It happened here on St. Clair Drive near Bree Drive. And we spoke to a lot of residents and they say they're concerned to hear the news. There's new neighbors like the one all across the street over there. They're new. They just moved in. David Porter has been living on St. Clair Drive in this tight knit new Baltimore neighborhood for years, and he's developed a rapport with his neighbors. But Jody and ourself and Leo here, we're, we've been together here for, oh God, probably 10 years. So when Porter found out about the alleged incident that happened on his street yesterday afternoon. I can't believe it. I mean, it's. It's kind of a quiet neighborhood. I mean, I can't believe somebody would be doing that at that time of day. The new Baltimore Police Department says a 13 year old girl was walking with her bike at around 530 yesterday evening when she was approached by a man asking if she needed a ride. The 13 year old girl told police the man then grabbed her, so she kicked the man to get away. She says the man ran away down the street towards Festival Park. I just cannot believe that it happened here in New Orleans. Porter says the area already gets heavy traffic and a lot of eyes. But after yesterday's incident, the neighbors will be even more vigilant to keep their quiet community safe. If you try it again, and if I'm out here, you're going to have to battle with me, buddy. If I see it, I'm going after him. And out here live now, the residents we spoke to were saying similar things. They're definitely going to make sure that they're vigilant, keeping their eyes open. However, the new Baltimore Police Department also says they'll be going around trying to check to see if anyone has video surveillance and captured this incident. Back to you. Well, in fact, Coco, do we have a, a description of the suspect? The description that police gave, it's very vague at this time, just saying a white man in his 20s with green eyes and what they described as messy hair. So, of course, they really need people to come forward if they yeah. heard anything, saw anything suspicious yesterday. Yeah, because that's uh, obviously not a ton to go on. All right, Coco. We are now three days into the last phase of fixing the sinkhole along 15 mile road. Significant progress being made, so much so it could be done earlier than Christmas. But you know what? There are lingering questions specifically to a lingering lawsuit. As Nick Monticelli reports tonight, the city of Sterling Heights still looking at various options to move a lawsuit forward so its citizens aren't on the hook for the project. Allow me to set the stage for this story. The city of Sterling Heights had their state of the city address this morning. A lot of good things to talk about. Chrysler bringing investments in jobs, new parks, a new community center, all good things. But since the announcement that the sinkhole repairs were complete in Fraser, there's been one major question. Isn't there a lawsuit against that whole thing? Yes, and the answers are inside. 
Let it flow. Let the flow go. Earlier this week, a huge milestone was met. The fix of the collapsed sewage line is fixed and the repairs to 15 Mile Road can begin. But that milestone also raised a new question. Isn't there a lawsuit about this $70 million project? Yes. <laughs> Interestingly enough, many of the key players involved in the sinkhole fix were at the Sterling Heights State of the City address. And Mayor Taylor confirms the lawsuit is still happening. We feel there's a problem and that the residents are being stuck with a big bill that uh, they don't deserve. The crux of the suit is that the Macomb Interceptor Drainage District was being paid to maintain the line that collapsed under 15 mile and never did. Had that work been done, I don't know, it's, it sure seems to me like uh, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. But who was getting sued has always been a point of contention. My contention is it's not a county asset. People don't realize that. I mean, the underground issues belong to the drain district. That is true, but it's tricky because the Macomb County Public Works Commissioner runs that district. And when this happened, that was Anthony Morocco. The person that was in charge of it is the person that should have known or should have seen what was happening. After a few hearings, a Macomb County judge ruled the city couldn't really sue the county. So now Sterling Heights is looking at suits against the district or the insurance companies. Yeah, we think there's a significant insurance coverage that can handle this. So we don't want county uh, uh, taxpayers to pick up a bill instead of city taxpayers. We want insurance companies. In Sterling Heights, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Now the next court hearing on this case will be in November. And as of right now, all Macomb County residents in that drainage district can expect to pay on average $25 a year for the next 25 years. Detroit police search for a group of thieves who broke into the New Hope Pharmacy on Conant Street. Broke right through the front door of the pharmacy this morning, took off with over-the-counter medicine, possibly some cash. The owner says the thieves were not able to get to any prescription drugs because they keep the medicine locked up at night. The United States ordering more than half of its Havana embassy to leave Cuba and also warning Americans against visiting the country. U.S. officials said it's done in response to what they're describing as targeted specific attacks affecting the health of U.S. diplomats on the island. The embassy in Havana will lose roughly 60 percent of its U.S. staff and will also stop processing visas in Cuba indefinitely. The incidents, including brain injury and hearing loss, began in the fall of 2016. The Detroit police trying to get more kids to read and they are teaming up with the National Little Free Library and their Detroit branch to try to help. A Little Free Library is a really cool book exchange. You take a book as well as leave a book with more than 50,000 locations in 70 countries now. Uh, little libraries will be added to the 9th, 10th and 12th precincts and police hope it'll change kids perceptions of police stations. And sometimes a police station can be a scary place and there's not a lot to do to uh, to encourage them, so we want to change that atmosphere where, where kids can look at it as a police, a nice place to come, and also we want it as a place where they can maybe stop in without their parents and pick up a book and drop off a book. In fact, eventually the Detroit police say they want a little library at every precinct in the city. A farmer in Washtenaw County fighting township officials for the right to host weddings in his barn, and the battle could really come down to a definition in the township. The township actually removed a term altogether when a judge ruled in the farmer's favor. Priya Mann reports from Dexter. This barn has been in the Nixon family for five generations, and in the past five years, they've held about 60 weddings here. But if the township has its way, all that supplemental income will be gone. I think I'm feeling betrayed from the township. Ryan Nixon sued Webster Township for the right to host weddings in his barn. Doing weddings in a barn is uh, almost 40% of my income. So it, it's a real big help. Nixon's 300 acre farm is zoned as an agricultural property and weddings are considered seasonal. He says in 2012, township officials said his business fell under agri-tourism. But last year, he got this notice of a zoning violation. For a township that's trying to keep agriculture alive, to say no to agritourism. Doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. This summer, a judge ruled in Nixon's favor, a decision the Webster Township supervisor disagrees with. I don't think the judge understood uh, the function of the ZBA. Supervisor John Kingsley says the ZBA, or Zoning Board of Appeals, is concerned about excessive noise, lights, and drunk drivers. And he has a message for farmers in the area. I would say you aren't allowed to do it now. You were never allowed to do it. And therefore, we are not taking it away. If you wish to do it, go to a commercial district and set your barn up there. 
It's expected the township will appeal. For now, Nixon has resumed booking weddings. I don't know if I want to take a chance on getting brides to book and have them come back and say I can't do it. So I got to watch what I do. Reporting from Dexter, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. You know, interesting too, corn mazes and pumpkin patches, for example, fall under the so-called mm -hmm. agritourism. But in this case, Webster Township says barn weddings just don't qualify for that. I love the idea of a barn wedding. It sounds <laughs> romantic, really, doesn't really it? Really cool. It I think so too. Now to good health. The wild weather we're seeing, these big swings in temperature that we've had, making for a busy week in the local doctor's offices. The potpourri of seasons causing problems for all kinds of people. Dr. Frank George is here to show us what is going around. Hey, Doc. Hey, Devin and Sandra. You know, when it comes to breathing problems, big changes in the weather, well, they're bad. And on top of that, we still have fall allergies, a surge in upper respiratory viruses, and some flu cases. Here's what's going around where you live. In Wayne County, everyone is reporting lots of upper respiratory infections. St. John Hospital is also seeing flu-like illnesses and colds in school-age kids. Pediatricians at Henry Ford in Dearborn are treating seasonal allergies, strep throat, and stomach viruses. Moving to Oakland County, Dr. Steve McGraw at Providence reports upper respiratory viruses that are hitting especially hard in people with lung diseases. The CVS Minute Clinics are seeing some flu cases, and Clarkson Medical Group reports colds, strep throat, and a little mono, too. Looking at Washtenaw County, U of M is seeing lots of children with upper respiratory infections, wheezing, and fever, as well as an uptick in upper respiratory symptoms in adults, too. Stomach viruses are also circulating, and St. Joseph Mercy reports an increase in patients suffering from breathing problems. Heading to Monroe County, the ER at ProMedica Monroe Regional is seeing coughs and congestion related to sinus infections. Dr. Anthony Songo's office reports sinus issues too, along with upper respiratory infections and seasonal allergies. Over to Macomb County, where St. John Macomb is very busy with lots of bad respiratory viruses. McLaren Macomb is treating allergies and asthma. Henry Ford Sterling Heights reports strep throat, and the CVS Minute Clinics are seeing sinus infections. Finally, in Livingston County, doctors at St. Joseph Mercy Livingston and Brighton are seeing lots of upper respiratory infections and asthma flare-ups. And of course, with the weather warming back up next week, doctors expect to see more of the of same. Yeah, it's up and down. I think there's a certain amount of skepticism as to whether or not, you know, a, a colder temperatures mean anything for your health, but you do see it increase well, when people Well, and come it's in, particularly right? the change in weather yeah. because yeah. people have trouble adapting to these sudden swings as opposed to, you know, a gradual yeah. change in the weather. Yeah. Which All makes right. more sense. Thanks, Doc. Mm -hmm. Well, it almost sounds absurd, but one person says it's very real. How he says a spaceship will land on Mars in um, just five years and why some same. people believe him. Five years away. Uh, and it was a chain of events they didn't see coming. How two workers, hundreds of feet in the air, became stuck in that very scary situation. We'll have it next. Hank? A virus, it can do major damage to your computer and cost you big money. Now the experts reveal what you should be doing right now to protect yourself and your PC. Have you seen the new at six? About nine years ago when the economy cratered, communities stopped spending on things like playground equipment. It's time. And this is what it looks like now. There's one community going out asking voters, hey, would you mind spending a little extra money to fix this? All right, Rod Plus, a nun who's almost 90 who keeps finding new finish lines to cross. <laughs> Sister Beth revealing the running ritual that keeps her on pace. All right, now here at 530, it can happen to anyone. Your files become locked on your computer. And then you get a message saying you can get your files back if you make a payment. Yeah, this is ransomware and it's been making headlines now for months, hitting universities, businesses, even hospitals. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester shows us things you can do to try to protect yourself. Your computer under attack, viruses now on the move all over the world. And if you don't take action right now to protect your PC, there could be big problems. Update. It is the first rule to follow. System updates not only provide fixes to bugs, but also can protect you against future threats. For businesses, if just one employee doesn't update their security software, it can infect all of the computers. Certain things can get out that shouldn't be able to get out, and certain things are able to get in that are, that are not supposed to be getting into their systems. Installing antivirus software will help prevent malware from infecting your computer. But just like operating systems, you must update the software to get the best protection. 
Remember, don't click on any suspicious emails or pop-ups. Experts believe ransomware initially infected computers through email attachments. Many companies don't have their emails set up properly, so people are making it, it's making it very easy for the bad guys to spoof their email, so they can say, oh, it looks like you, but it's not really you, it's the bad guy sending that email. It can also infect computers through pop-up ads, offering products that could remove malware. But what if you're already affected by ransomware? Cybersecurity experts say never pay the ransom. Because once you do it the first time, you become an easy target, right? So they'll start coming back and do the same thing. And immediately disconnect your computer from the internet so it doesn't affect other devices that you're already connected to at the time. Then contact a technology professional who specializes in data recovery. We have more security tips from the experts. You'll find everything you need to know right here at ClickOnDetroit.com. Just look for the Help Me Hank page under the News tab. I'm Hank Winchester. Back to you. Hank also says creating a backup of your data and then storing it somewhere on a hard drive allows you to erase data off of an infected computer. Something to think about. And, and of course, that you know you don't want to pay it because then the cycle never ends. You become so vulnerable. But you also understand people who think, I, I got to have this data, whatever it might be. Right. So they, 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 they you pay. almost give they up. Give in. Pay, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah.